Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. This is our weekly Google for Education webinar, which should last approximately 45 minutes. My name is Mike Schwab, and I'm on the Google for Education team in Mountain View, California. For a little bit of housekeeping before we get going, everyone's been muted, so as to not interfere with the audio. We'll have some time at the end of the presentation for Q&A, so I want to make sure that everyone has a chance to ask questions. If you do have questions during the webinar, please feel free to, ch uh, to chat those into the GoToWebinar chat bar, and I'll make sure to address them at the end. So let's get going. So first, for a brief agenda, today's webinar is going to cover Google's mission in education, which is centering on open technology to improve learning, and the Google in Education offering to schools, including the platform, devices, and content. And then finally, we're going to open it up for Q&A at the end. 60%. Here on the Google for Education team, we think about this number a lot. But what is this 60%? 60% is the percentage of students currently in school today whose future career does not exist yet. And if you think about it, many of the tech roles that you and I have, they probably didn't exist when we were in school. When I was a student, there was no Google and Education account manager. There was no Google for Education, period. Chromebooks and tablets didn't exist. And this isn't true of tech roles. Many non-tech roles have changed dramatically as well generally as a result of the adoption of technology. The way we research, collaborate, and disseminate information has already evolved and will continue to change. So conventional thinking on education is no longer enough, and it needs to change as well. We need to teach our kids the tools to be successful, how to collaborate, how to research, how to organize information, how to formulate an argument, etc. In many ways, technology has already transformed the way we communicate, participate, and experience the world. Technology removes barriers. When I was growing up, if I wanted to research a topic, I went to the library. And in many instances, the entry into the encyclopedia was my only source of information. And once I had finished the article, I was done. But technology has opened up new worlds of information for today's students. They now have the ability to explore and learn more deeply. This slide shows a few examples of how technology is changing our world. The first picture shows one of our schools in Fort Sam Houston in Texas. And they serve as a, as a very heavily military population. And they chose to use Google Apps and Chromebooks because it enabled their parents to stay connected to their students' work even when they were deployed overseas. The second picture shows how technology also allows for other stakeholders to be involved in education. It shows how you can use Google Plus Hangouts to bring experts into the classroom. For instance, you could bring in a local political figure in to speak with a government class or have a surgeon talk to biology students. The third picture is a painting you might recognize. It's, it's George Sherratt's A Sunday on La Grande Jatte, which is typically housed in the Art Institute of Chicago. And like most students, I've never been to the Art Institute and have never seen this painting in person, but now we all can. And Google's taken high-resolution photos of many paintings as part of the Google Art Project. So we're now able to zoom in on the painting and study the details that lead to the pointillism movement. And then lastly, we don't all have the luxury of traveling to the Galapagos Islands to learn about sea turtles, but we can all open up Chrome on any device and travel with maps tracks to explore and learn about these islands and other places of the world. So what can we do to help transform education? Google's mission is to organize the world's information, make it universally accessible and useful. Here on the Google for Education team, we believe that open technology is the key to improving education. And you might ask, what does it mean for a school to quote unquote go Google? We asked our Google schools and they told us it's more than about technology. It's about adopting that very culture that extends beyond the classroom walls. It's about openness, curiosity, working together. Going Google in education means four things to us. Number one, empowerment, helping students to discover a world of infinite resources. Number two, choice, 
being able to use the right device anytime, anywhere, and having the choice of what device you're going to use. Number three, it's about teamwork, having students, teachers, and parents able to work together in real time. And lastly, scalability. We need to be able to bring in technology that's affordable and easy to manage. So I'll take a couple of minutes and talk about more of each of these. First, empowerment. When you have access to digital content, it empowers students and gives teachers the tools for individualized learning. Now, it's important to help students to discover that world of infinite resources and change the role of the teacher from a lecturer who disseminates that information to a facilitator who now coaches and supports students as they explore the information accessible to them and solve real-world problems. Secondly, Google believes in giving schools choice, the ability to use the right device anytime, anywhere. Because what good is the information if it isn't accessible in the classroom? Teachers can only change the way they teach if students have the reliable access to a device. So we want teachers and students to use the right device, whether that be a laptop, tablet, smartphone, or a desktop PC, and to be able to use that device in school, at home, or on the go. We think that a student's information and learning environment should be easy to access and secure, whether they're using whatever device they choose. Basically, we want technology to get out of the way so students and teachers can focus on that content and on working together. With that in mind, Google Solutions work on many platforms, so schools can, they can use their existing equipment and keep their options open, even if they commit to new device deployments. Next, it's going Google is about teamwork. P teachers say that being able to work together in real time using Google Apps, Google Docs, is the most profound change in the way they teach and the way that the students learn. Collaboration is going to foster teamwork and problem solving and organization, key skills that are required for the modern world. So how can you take collaboration to the next level, real time, across the world, anytime, anywhere? One way is with Google Docs, where multiple students can work together in the same document at the same time. And this makes school more likely to be like real work, the way that I work every day. Students can learn more by working with a set of classmates with diverse perspectives, and they learn how to get group work done. Who's the leader? Who's going to be the editor? Who has the right to change that work? These discussions and, and same, and are the same kind that they're going to have at university and in, in, in the professional world. This slide animates how people are able to collaborate within a shared document through Google Apps working together from different locations across different devices. Finally, going Google is about scale, having technology that is affordable and easy to manage. With a school's budget, the price of a device matters, as low-cost solutions give more students an opportunity to go Google. But scalability and device and content management are equally important to keep that total cost of ownership low and allow the IT teams to manage the surge in device deployment. Google makes devices that are quick and easy to set up as well as manage. And with Google Apps as the foundation, it's easy to manage 10 devices, 10,000 devices, or even 100,000 devices with our admin tools. You can set up an entire classroom of our tablets or our Chromebooks in just minutes. And because these devices are intuitive to use, the students get started with them quickly there's no need to run around doing troubleshooting in every classroom. And with 24-7 online and phone support, we can help out if you do run into any of those challenges. This is the sort of offering that means you can easily scale your IT. Next, I'm going to discuss what Google has to offer in education. So we know that technology can help transform education, but let's not forget the real change requires people, and people need to help that change. Google makes the transition easy by making the technology feel invisible and out of the way. And we do this by making it simple and secure and making it seamless across all platforms, whether that's the core platform of Google Apps, the devices to access that platform, and the content that you're going to access through those devices. Obviously, we think this approach sets us apart from the competitors that focus on just one or two of these key elements, leaving you to deal with that gap. So how can you start to go Google? First is the platform. 
We offer schools a free suite of services called Google Apps for Education. These include Gmail as your email service provider, and then productivity tools like Docs, spreadsheets, presentations for content creation. We have Google Sites, Google Groups, and since Google Apps and Education are all web-based, it means that they're available from any device with a web browser. And they're also great for collaborating because multiple people can be editing at the same time. Google Apps for Education are incredibly popular in schools. There's over 30 million Google Apps for Education users found across 180 different countries. And currently, 74 of the top U.S. universities are using Google Apps for Education, including seven of the eight Ivies. On an international scale, like I mentioned, we are spanned across the globe, and over 180 countries are using Google Apps for Education. Not only is Google Apps a powerful, transformative platform for schools, the price is certainly right. Google Apps for Education is 100% free and without ads. On to devices. We're excited to say that we now have many choices of devices for schools. With Chromebooks and the tablets with Google Play for Education, going one-to-one -one is now easier than ever. Chromebooks are web-based computers that are great for schools because they're easy to use, easy to manage, easy to customize, and very easy to scale. With Chromebooks, students open the lid, sign in, and are up and running in under eight seconds, which allows your teachers to dedicate more of their valuable time towards instruction versus waiting for a device to boot up. When you're using Chromebooks, everything is stored on the web, so it also doesn't matter what machine you use. When your students sign in to any Chromebook, they're taking to the learning experience that you've designed for them based on your curriculum goals. And the idea is for the technology to seem completely invisible in the classroom. It's just another tool like a desk or a pencil. Chromebooks are great because they're shareable and incredibly simple to use for students and faculty. Chromebook adopters have said that they love the devices because they just work. We're now offering a wide range of Chromebook laptop devices, whether it's from Samsung, Acer, Lenovo ThinkPads, Dell, HP, Asus, Toshiba, the list goes on. The hardware specs on each of the devices could be a little bit different. They might vary in terms of screen size, ports, weight, et cetera, but all of them are running the Chrome operating system. And all of them are managed through your Google Apps for Education account by using a Chromebook management license. So even though there are going to be some differences in hardware, the user experience and the management experience is going to be the same across all devices. Let's talk a little bit about this management experience because I, I think it's one of the crucial differences with Chromebooks compared to other devices out there on the market. So Chromebooks are incredibly easy to manage. We get that. And if you're in tech and if you talk to your tech department, you know that managing devices takes up a significant portion of their time. Buying licenses and installing software locally setting up antivirus controls, continually checking to make sure they're running and updated, wiping, re-imaging devices periodically. All these things are very time consuming and very, very cost intensive. Since these, con these Chrome devices are entirely web-based, it makes management a breeze. Chrome will shift the model away from the old way of maintaining and managing where you have to touch each and every device. With Chromebooks, you manage all of your devices through one centralized web page. Here you're able to control device settings and set security controls on all of your computers. For instance, you can require that students route through your proxy regardless of where they're signed in with their Chromebook. You can specify who uses your devices, potentially locking it down so only your students and faculty can use your Chromebooks. You can also easily push out web-based applications out to your students with just, a, with just a few clicks in the Management Council. And all these controls within the Chromebook Management Council enable you to create a secure testing environment, which makes Chromebooks approved for Park and Smarter Balance testing. Chromebooks have multiple layers of security built right in, including sandboxing and verified boot. Also, as web-based devices, they're secure against malware and viruses. These are forever fresh. Google releases a new version of the Chrome operating system about every six or seven weeks, and your Chromebooks receive that new version, so you're getting all the updates and improvements to the operating system and your management council. In order to use the management council, 
you need to purchase a one-time license at $30 per device for the life of the device. And you'll need one license for every Chromebook you have. And that also includes 24-7 Google Enterprise phone and online support. So let's take a quick look at the Management Council. For those of you that have seen the Google Apps Admin Council, this is going to look very familiar to you. So this is your home page in the Admin Council. What I can do is go to Device Management, go to Chrome, and here I can control user settings on Chrome devices. So I'll call out a few that uh, are, seem to be extremely popular. Number one, apps and extensions. So you can actually push out apps and extensions directly from the Chrome Management Council. So here, I can click this and look for particular applications and push these out simply by hitting Add. These are going to instantly show up on my Chromebook. So this allows me to push out web apps to whether it's a classroom, a handful of students, or the entire district with just a few clicks. I can also allow my students to configure their own password. Or I can enable or turn off incognito mode so people can't get around my privacy or, or my settings, my policy settings for my devices. You can turn on and off safe browsing. As I told you earlier, you can force through your proxy. So no matter where your students are signed in, it's going to be through your proxy. Some other neat things, you can have your Chromebooks instantly open up a home page once your student logs in. So for example, when they log in, you could have your classroom Google site, maybe that you created to manage your classroom activities, be the first page that pops up. You can enable screenshots or disable them. As you can see, the options go on and on. This is interesting in that this is where you can block particular URLs. So I can either whitelist in, uh, particular websites or I can blacklist the entire internet if I choose so and only allow certain websites to be accessed. Now, I'm going to go back and go into device settings. So now I can push out particular device settings to the actual Chromebook devices. So some neat things here is forced re-enrollment. We just released this. So if my students, like all of them, will figure out to do with any device, decide to wipe the machine to get around some policies I might have enforced, what this force re-enrollment will do is require that device to automatically enroll back to my domain and my policy settings, and there's no way to get around that. This is very important, and it really, really detours theft. I can enable or allow guest mode or turn off guest mode, so they again, they have to sign in with a domain account. You can have sign-in restriction. So I could allow my devices to only sign in with my domain. What's really neat is this kiosk app. So what I can do here is push out particular applications We had a little hiccup, one second. It looks like we might be having a small issue right there, but what I wanted to show you was by pushing out these kiosk apps, you can push out an application made by Air that once the device is opened up, the only thing that is available on the screen is the Air app, which allows you to get directly to Smarter Balance or Park Testing. So 
now we're back in the presentation. So in April 2013, the entire country of Malaysia announced that they were going to go Google. They deployed Google Apps for 11 million parents, teachers, and students, as well as over 100,000 Chromebooks nationwide for primary and secondary students. This is just an example of the ability to manage the devices and the platform at scale. We also help schools go Google through tablet devices. Late last fall, we expanded our device offering, offering to include tablets with Google Play for Education. And this program is open to K-12 schools in the U.S. and parts of Canada. Our teams work very, very hard with schools to ensure that the solution of devices, content, and management was truly designed for learning and made for the classroom. We designed the program to make it easy for schools to deploy devices into the classroom, to be able to discover strong educational content for their teachers and students, and to deliver the apps, videos, and books to the right users. Now, tablets aren't one size fit all. We were told that by schools across the country. And depending on the age of your students and the classroom use cases you want to emphasize, you might have to very have, you might have very specific hardware needs. So Google's worked with a variety of leading tablet companies to give schools a wide variety of choice. There's a few things these tablets have in common though. Just like Chromebooks, we focused on making the tablets affordable, durable, and easy to scale. And at 229 for the start, starting price point, the Nexus 7 is a great tablet at a practical price. It's portable enough to work well with your younger grades, and the cameras on the front and back make it perfect for video and storytelling projects. And it's very, very slim, so it makes it great for reading. The 10.1-inch Samsung Ga Galaxy Tablet for Education is the first tablet Samsung has ever designed expressly for the classroom, and it shows. The protective case and the Corning Gorilla, Gorilla Glass Make it mean make uh, means that it stands up to heavy daily use by students, and Samsung's unique multi-window functionality means students can do multiple things at once, like watch a, a YouTube for education video and take notes, for example. The 10.1-inch ASUS Transformer Pad is affordable and flexible because it has an optional plug-in keyboard that makes longer composition projects a breeze. It also comes with a one-year accidental damage protection policy. So if anything happens to the tablet during its first year in class, ASUS will fix it for free. And finally, the 8-inch HP Slate 8 Pro is focused on portability and lasting usage. This has a battery that lasts up to 11 and a half hours. It has a Gorilla Glass screen and a weight of just one pound. So whatever device you choose, it's going to be easy to set up and it'll work seamlessly with Google Play for Education. Tablets are extremely personal devices, and most schools using tablets in the class eventually hope to get to a one-to-one -one deployment. But that's not always realistic right away. We wanted to make it easy for schools to roll out tablets gradually while helping more students get the full one-to-one -one experience. So we recently introduced support for multiple accounts. Now schools can add up to five accounts on a single tablet, setting up individual student logins for each one. When a student picks up their designated tablet and signs in, they'll get access, instant access to Google Apps like Docs and Drive, as well as any apps, books, and videos that their teacher has shared out with them. So instead of having to work around the limitations of using generic accounts for tablets, teachers can now have a cart of devices the way they were meant to work in the classroom. So it makes it easy for schools to see the impact of a one-to-one -one while you're evaluating whether or not to invest in larger device purchases. Now, we were also told that tablet setup and management can be very, very painful and manual. IT departments also often have to configure devices with school policies and settings one by one. So rolling out devices at the start of, of scale can take days, if not weeks. So once the tablets are in class, even app installations can require approval before content is downloaded in onto the tablet, creating an additional administrative headache that can make it hard to be nimble within your curriculum if you are a teacher. So Google for Education makes it easier to scale by streamlining the process. Setting a classroom worth of tablets takes a matter of minutes, not days. Just configure your school settings in the Management Council, create a spreadsheet of student accounts, 
And NFC technology makes it easy as, as easy as bumping the two tablets together. Ultimately, this is going to mean that your IT department doesn't have to spend time struggling with hardware. After your school settings are chosen, the technology takes care of itself. Now, after you set up the devices, it's time to figure out what to do with them. That's why we created Google Play for Education, which is a single destination for teachers to find and share educational content. Play for Education makes it easy for teachers to explore Android apps for tablets, Chrome apps for Chromebooks, and books and videos that can be enjoyed from any web browser. Instead of putting a request into the IT department and waiting for apps to be loaded onto individual tablets, teachers can explore Play for Education themselves and instantly send out the content that they want to teach to the students. And it's as easy as sharing a Google Doc. This new level of flexibility makes it easier for teachers to try new things and to teach their current students' needs and interests. Let's take a look at a few examples of the educational content teachers can share with students using Google Play for Education. What I'm going to do is take you into the Play for Education site. Now, unless your school has been whitelisted to be able to access the Google Play for Education site, you're not going to have access to it, and it is different than the Google Play Consumer site. What I can do from here is, let's imagine that I'm a teacher. I can click on Android Apps, and let's say that I'm a math teacher, and I teach third grade. We've made it really, really easy to sort through content and find content that has been rated by Q, Computer Using Educators, to be into the Google Play for Education store. So in this example, I want to align to common core standards of making sense of problems and, and perseverance in solving them. Instantly, I know these apps are going to align with my third grade needs. If I want to purchase an app, we've made it very, very easy to purchase. I would click on Buy. I would select the quantity that I want for this purpose. I'm going to buy one because I'm using real money from our demo account. This is where things get really neat. As for a payment method, I can have free uploaded POs and have the ability to purchase against them. For this one, I'm going to purchase against my STEM PO. I'm going to hit Continue. hit buy. And now I can choose who to send it to. Since I only have one license, I'm going to send it to Jimbo Leonard. If I had purchased 30 licenses, I could send it to an entire group, my entire classroom, which was already pre-set up in Google Classroom. Once I hit add, save, Instantaneously, this is going to show up on Jimbo Leonard's tablet. I can also do the same thing with Chrome Apps. This was just announced recently at ISTE. So now, if I'm a teacher, I can push out Chrome Apps to my Chromebooks, which before was only possible through the Google Admin Council. So the same thing applies. If I want to install this on a Chromebook, I can hit that, I can hit whatever group I want to install it, and hit Done. Same process. The same goes for books. We've worked with all the major publishers to be able to have book rentals. So not only are there thousands of free titles, we can also push out rentals. Anywhere from 30 to 60 days. We found that this makes more sense than buying books and owning them when they go stale so quickly. We can also now push out videos. So now I can access Google for Education, uh, YouTube for Education videos from any device anywhere. Back to purchase orders, because this is such an important part of this. This is where me as an admin can delegate who has the ability to purchase against particular POs. So I could add in certain teachers that might relate to this ELA purchase order and they'll be able to purchase against it. For the sake of time, 
I'm going to get back into the presentation. So even though the devices are there, having the device is not enough. We feel that schools need strong educational content to use and an easy way to find it. So hopefully that quick little demo showed you that. But there's over one million apps in the Google Play Store. And with your license, you gain access to what I told you earlier, the Play for Education site that enables you to search for apps that are great because they've already been vetted and approved by other educators. There's also great content in there. So there's a huge variety of K-12 content and tools that you need to find perfect material for any lesson. Past schools have needed to run all content management through a central office. As I showed you in the demo, you can now have this power at your fingertips. Running through the central office really slows things down and makes it hard for classrooms to get the digital resources that they need in a timely manner. So Google Play for Education makes life easier by giving teachers that control and flexibility that they need. So all this really adds up to tools that help schools act nimbly, giving more control to teachers who understand their students best. The Google Play for Education site makes it easy for teachers to get the right content to each student as well. Sharing that app, book, or video is simple as sharing a Google Doc. And when you find content that you want your students to use, you assign it to either an individual student or across that Google group of students so that you can share it to a whole classroom or even an entire district in a matter of clicks. And once it's shared, the content's downloaded onto the tablets immediately with no additional steps required or no reason to plug the tablets in. So since this is so quick and easy, it means t teachers can differentiate their approach based on current students' needs and interests. For example, the whole class could learn about gravity with a variety of apps that take different approaches to the subject. There's a cat physics app for the animal lovers out there. There's a NASA app for the space fans. And in the past, this type of customization would have been impractical. It just took too much overhead to have a personalized experience on each tablet. And because it's so easy for teachers to find and share content with no wires or individual confirmations required, it's now feasible to give each student the tools that are going to best motivate them. Within the Google Play for Education site, it's really easy to find the right app for the job because you're able to filter based on, like I showed you, subject, grade level, classroom activity, common core standard, and more. If you're looking for reading material, you can choose from thousands of K-12 books in Google Play for Education. Again, we've worked with all the major publishers to make a huge selection of titles available for rental at affordable prices. So instead of buying a classroom set of books that a class three years from now is not going to be interested in, teachers can customize their reading materials to their students' current interests. And one thing I should note is once that book is assigned, Students have the flexibility to read it on any device through Google Play for Books Reader. So if your tablet stay at school, the student can log into their school account from their web browser at home on any device and pick up right where they left off. Students can also take notes, highlight, look up word definitions, and more. Finally, thousands of YouTube for Education videos are also available in the Google Play for Education site. YouTube videos are great for bite-sized lessons that communicate the concepts in a fun and engaging way. And, and videos teachers find and share from Google Play for Education appear in a dedicated playlist that can be different for each student. So like books, the video playlist is available from any, any web browser. And this is a great way to share educational videos at school without worrying about the whole wide, wide world of YouTube. I also want to quickly touch on Classroom. I'm sure lots of you have heard the buzz about Classroom. This is a new tool from Google, uh, the Google for Education team that's designed to help teachers do more teaching in the classroom and less teching. Teachers told us around the world that they spent way too much time in the classroom trying to keep technology working and organized. And to address this, we worked with teachers to design Google Classroom, a tool that weaves together Docs, Drive, and Gmail. Classroom helps teachers create and collect assignments paperlessly, making copies for different students, see who hasn't completed their work, and provide real-time feedback. And it also helps teachers stay connected with their students through announcements and discussions. Classroom is going to be available to all Google Apps for Education schools this September 2014.
This now concludes the slides for today's webinar. What we've covered, Google's mission to bring affordable, open technology to schools to help transform education. Covering the free platform we provide through Google Apps for Education and the different devices that can help you go Google, which are Chromebooks and tablets with Google Play for Education. At this point, we have a few minutes left to be able to look at some Q&A that has been chatted into the WebEx. It looks like the first question is, where do I buy Google Play for Education tablets? And can I use tablets, Android tablets that I've already owned? The answer is we've enabled lots of resellers around the country to be able to purchase tablets. So you might want to check with your current favorite reseller on if they are able to sell Google Play for Education tablets and the Google Play for Education management. As for previous tablets, unfortunately, Google Play for Education tablets requires certain hardware and software uh, within the tablet design. So Android tablets before these four that were announced most likely will not be able to work with Google Play for Education. Another question, do you have Chromebooks with touch screens? We are seeing more Chromebooks come out and be released that have a touch screen. Currently there's a Google Pixel which is a touch screen. Lenovo has a touch screen and they're coming out with a yoga model which folds in half on top of itself to kind of give more of a tablet form factor along with that laptop form factor. And Acer also has one. And we've heard that OEMs are going to start building more models. So by the end of the year, Intel itself is going to be inside of more than 20 different Chromebooks. What type of professional development does Google offer with their Google for Education offerings? Great question. So if you go to google.com slash edu slash training, that will bring you to our Google for Education training site which has unlimited resources that are free to get your students and teachers confident in the classroom. We've taken best-in-class resources from around the country, curated it along with our own content to create an open ecosystem of professional development resources for you to prepare your faculty for this new world. Good question. Someone has asked, are app licenses licensed per user or per device? So what you do is purchase per user. What we've done with the Play for Education apps is worked with third-party content providers in that most of the paid-for apps are reassignable. For example, if you purchase an app that costs $1.99 per user, once that user is done with that particular app, the teacher can then reassign it to another student or reassign it to another entire classroom so a different teacher could utilize that application. This is something that's very unique to our offering at this point. Great. Well, I want to thank all of you for joining us today. I hope that this proved to be helpful. It's an exciting time in education right now, and I look forward to talking to you all soon. Thank you.